computer. Lord, heard the hum. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus. To God be the glory forever and ever and ever. Well, welcome to another one of our Spirit Side Chats. Now, I want to continue chatting with you about being Christ's nature. That is his grace. God and nature continued. Who am I in Christ? Uh -huh. His two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. And as believers and disciples, we must know what this is. Therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, giving you glory and honor. We come before you, magnifying your name, glorifying you, lifting you up because you are just so mm, good. For we are tasting and seeing that you are good. And we are just your witnesses to just tell the world that our Lord is good. We thank you for your word that will go from our lips to your ears, Father, that you have sent to us first. So we just thank you for your word, Father God, from the word from on high, Father God, as we continuously glorify and magnify you with your word, Father God. We thank you that not one individual will walk away from their devices and or this facility in the same manner of which he or she has entered. But there will be some new knowledge, Father God, revelation, Father God, that is flowing through their bones, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you and we praise you, Father God, that this word will provoke them, Father God, to provoke all of us to open up our B-I-B-L-E's, Father God and to read, and to see, and to visit, and to sit at your feet, Father God, and see the word transform us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, the helper that you've left with us, to lead God and direct us, and to teach us, Father God, so that we're able to be transformed in the name of Jesus. We just bless you, and we praise you, and we thank you, Father God. We pray all this in the mighty name of your dear son, Jesus, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we say amen, 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 and amen again. Well, if you have your Bibles and or your devices, which I'm sure that you do, turn with me to Hebrews. God still have us in Hebrews. And I know the reason why. Turn with us to Hebrews 4. Uh, for the body of Christ must walk by what? Faith. Must walk by what? Faith. faith and not by what sight meaning that we are spirit-led creatures by revelational knowledge spirit-led creatures by revelational knowledge spirit can't lead you if you're not in tune with his revelation you guys with me on this now the revelation is god's communication to us let me make that clear revelation it's his communication mm -hmm. to us. Because even if we read the scriptures, he's got to interpret what those scriptures mean yes, to right. him. Right. Because if they mean to him, that means they're good for us. Mm -hmm. And we've got to get an understanding of what that is. That's right. You know, you can't read God's word and not allow God to interpret it. That's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because God has a language. Isn't that what you isn't that what somebody said in it? God has a language, and we've got to be in tune to his language and not ours. So those who are the ears that God wants us to hear with, those are the ears that God wants us to hear with. And that's why they're called spiritual ears. Amen. You have natural ears and you have spiritual ears. This ministry is about spirit. Yeah. Not yes. about natural. Yes. Therefore, let's be led by the Spirit. Amen. You guys turn with me to Hebrews 4, and we're going to start where we left off at, and that's at verse 11. We're not going to be long today, but we're going to be as long as the Holy Spirit will demand us to be. Amen. Starting at verse 11, and I'm going to read down to 13, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It says, quote, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, mm -hmm. lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Mm -hmm. 
That's powerful there right there, y'all. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. We often repeat that scripture, but it has significant meaning. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, not one, none. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give account. My God, my God, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of this holy scripture. And may we be blessed to receive the revelation from this scripture in order to comport and conduct our lives in the manner that is in the will of God. All right. First, note that a sword is a weapon. Yeah. Let me say that again. A sword is a weapon. You guys with me on this? Yes. It is a symbol of war, a symbol of military power, of authority and punitive. Can y'all say punitive? punitive? Say it again, punitive. like you mean it. Punitive. And punitive justice. You guys with me? For us, it is also a symbol of violence. Let me say that again. For us, it is also a symbol of violence. Quote, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Matthew 11 and 12. Understand, we're taking this by force. Amen. You guys understand what I'm saying? There's a battle going on here. And the only way that we can take it is by force, mm -hmm. is by being the weapon that God needs for us mm -hmm. in order to take heaven by force. Mm -hmm. You guys with me on this? Yeah. John the Baptist was not only the forerunner, right? Mm -hmm. But he was also a prophet. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Y'all with me on this? Yeah. Meaning that he was also a weapon of God. See, what you got to understand is that prophets are weapons. Mm -hmm. Seriously, they are weapons. Why? Because they forewarn and they foretell, right? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, for those of you who've been following us on our social media, we're asking folk to repent, for the kingdom of God is soon to come. So that means that he's returning soon and very soon. Quote, for all the prophets and the law. Can y'all say the law? The law. Can y'all say the law again? The law. Prophesied until John. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that the law is a prophet? Yeah. Is that is that what this word is telling me? That the law prophesies. Mm -hmm. hmm? Well, how does the law prophesize? How does it prophesy? Huh? Because it, it forewarns you to love God. And like him, love your neighbor. It is a warning. It is a parameter of what? Love. You guys with me on this? Look, look, look. For all the prophets and the law, and the law here is specific as to not a what, but a who. That's the reason why he's mentioned with the prophets. Until John, right? And if you are willing to receive it, see, you got to receive the prophet. You got to receive the warning. You guys with me on this? Yes. If you're willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who have ears, let him hear. That's Matthew 11, 13 through 15. You guys with me on this? Yes. So it takes a special ear to hear this, but let's break it down. This indicates that John is actually the last prophet of the old dispensation. That is of the Old Testament, of the old time. But Christ says that he is Elijah, who was a Elijah, who was a mighty prophet during a turbulent time. Are y'all catching this? During a turbulent time in Israel's history, who is to come? Y'all with me on this? Yeah. Now, Israel is symbolic of the people of God that are now called the body of Christ. 
Hmm? Hmm? Therefore, make no mistake, we are living in turbulent times. Huh? huh? Yeah. It has not changed. Why? Because time doesn't change. See, people think that time changes all the time. Time doesn't change to God. Time is the same. It is the same yesterday, today, and it will be the same until it is gone. You guys with me on this? So the mighty prophet is to come in the new dispensation. Hmm? John the Baptist is symbolic of this prophet, or should I say the spirit of the Baptist, which is a mighty prophet, Elijah, to come, is symbolic of this prophet. Y'all notice I said the spirit of. Mm -hmm. The question is, who is or are the Baptists and the Elijahs that are to come? That's the question. For their words, check this out, y'all. For their words should cut like a precision scalpel. Mm -hmm. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. The words of these weapons, of these prophets, should cut like a precision scalpel. And the sword that Christ speaks of in these scripts have two edges. Y'all with me on this? Yes. A device that is sharp on both sides. There's no dullness in any area of this blade. You guys with me? In other words, it does damage on all sides of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Note, I want you guys to note this. Brother Tweed, note this. We, you, are here to do damage. Amen. You guys understand me? Huh? We have a responsibility to do damage. Mm -hmm. Huh? Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Huh? If you're in Christ Jesus, you have a responsibility to do damage. These scripts that Christ conveys to us is a warning concerning our salvation. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> it's a warning concerning our salvation. And the warning is for the body of Christ as he compares us to the house of Israel. Y'all notice that that's what's going on here? Do you notice that in these scripts that we've been chatting about for the last three weeks, that there is a comparison here between us and them? You guys notice that? Yeah. There were those in the house of Israel that were labeled as God's children, but in the wilderness lost their status. Oh, Jesus. You guys see that? They, they, they were part of the house of Israel, but they lost their status in a turbulent place in the wilderness. Hmm? You understand that? You want to know how I know? Because not all of them made it to the promised land. God even told us that. Look, look, look. Those who believe that they would journey into the promised land never made it due to disobedience. You guys understand me? That's the reason why we got to be the church and not play the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. God is the same today as he was yesterday. He hasn't changed, meaning that we too in the body of Christ can lose our status of salvation. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Please hear me, church. Please hear me. Once again, just because we are labeled as the body of Christ does not mean we will automatically become the bride of Christ. You guys understand this? Stay with me here. There is a difference, and Christ is warning us of this in these scriptures. Why do you think that there's those like me that are preaching this and teaching this? That's right. Now, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, but I don't know. I don't know. Understand that the body is fractured, even in this age. Oh, can I say that again? Yeah. The body is fractured, yes, it is. even in this age. See, we think we got it made. Huh. And that is the reason why his body was broken for us. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Can I tell y'all something? That is... Those of us who are truly his body, he separated us from an old debilitating, debilitating way of thinking to a renewed way of knowledge. See, you got to understand that there are those in the body of Christ that still have a debilitating way of thinking. They think flesh, nothing but flesh. All they want is flesh, 
satisfy my flesh. Give me what I need so I can go and live a death life after I leave the service. But nothing is deposited into them. No victory. Death still has a sting over them. Understand this, that there are those of us who are truly in the body. He's separated. Hmm? Now, the separation is symbolic of a lot of things, but this is definitely one of them. Way of thinking from an old debilitating way of thinking to a renewed way of knowledge. And see, their problem was, is that in the Old Testament, they had an old debilitating way of thinking. Even when he had them by the hand and he showed them himself at first hand knowledge. Yeah. Those who have ears, let them hear this. This indicates that not all of us have ears to hear what saith the Lord. Y'all with me on this? Which was the case in the house of Israel. Christ separated his body from the cancer that is contained in it. If you think that there's no cancer in the body of Christ, you are sadly mistaken. If you that's it's no different from the kingdom. God had to separate the kingdom so that he could get Lucifer out. Why would you think that we're different? For the greatest prophet of us all is Christ. Y'all with me on this? He is the greatest prophet of them all, of us all. Now, these scriptures have everything in them containing our salvation. Who or what we are to become and what we are to do, which is important. For God, hmm? <laughs> for this warning and instruction are given directly by Christ. You want to know why I say that? Because we don't know who wrote Hebrews. No, no. So you know what I say? Christ wrote it because he wrote it all anyway. Doesn't matter who wrote it. He wrote it all anyway. He used Matthew to write Matthew. You, you guys understand what I'm saying? He uses people. But see, I believe that this was strategically done this way so that you know that, hey, doesn't matter who wrote what. What matters is that it is the infallible word from me, which is God. You guys understand? Yeah. So, 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 so this is a warning and instruction that is given by Christ, and it is for those who have ears to hear. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. For God wants us ready, and he wants us to get the body ready. For he is soon to return. So let us chat about it, shall we? Let us not be scared of the word, but let's welcome it and be happy about it. Because I don't know about you. I can't wait for his return. <laughs> You're talking about crying out to God. All the misery that's going on here. Can't wait. But as I have always said, Understand that one must remember that God's word is full of what? Symbolisms and representation. Symbolisms and representation. Let's go to Hebrews 4.11. For Hebrews 4.11 says this. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Hmm? He's talking about something here. Least anyone fall. Can y'all say fall? Fall. fall? Say it again. Fall. Fall. Say it like you mean it. Fall. fall. According to the example of disobedience, Ooh, this is word, right? This is not me. This is word. Hmm? And if you call yourself a believer, then you had better believe what he says. See, a lot of us read the Bible and we don't believe it. We don't take each and every word that he says. Oh, it's not for me. It's happenstance. No, it's directly related and directed to you mm -hmm. because it's the word. And if I call myself a believer, that means that I believe what he's saying, right? right? This is a powerful statement and a continuation from last week's scripture and spirit side chat. So Christ tells us that he who has entered his rest has himself ceased from his works as God did from his Hebrews 4.10, right? It was discovered in last week's chat that our work should be the same work or works of God the Father. Hmm? 
If you don't remember, go back and look at it. That is why it's called kingdom business. See, you can't say that you're a believer or a disciple and not do kingdom business. That's right. See, because everything that surrounds you and everything of who you are should be God's kingdom and kingdom business. I don't care if you're working at your secular job, if you're at the grocery store. I don't care if you're at the dental office. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're at home with your wife or your husband and with your kids. Everything about you is kingdom. Yeah. Kingdom yeah. business. Yeah. That's what makes you peculiar. But it doesn't mean that you're strange. See, but the world will call you strange because it goes opposite of what the world dictates. Not here to follow the world. I'm here to conduct kingdom business. You guys, what they stay with me. And what that work is, is love. That has never changed from the very beginning. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was, that's love. There's no tighter bond than that. And that's spiritual. You guys with me on this? Therefore, we cease from our work by entering into our Sabbath. Huh? Remember we talked about that. Remember that the Sabbath is right here and right now with us. And it is not a day or a period of time. Those who believe that it is a day or a period of time, they don't know God. They're convoluted. You cannot judge me because I, you know, and Christ tells us this. Who amongst you, if you see your sheep fall into a dish, ditch on what you call the Sabbath, will not save it? That's the reason why he's our Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And you rest in him. But, 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 but I've kind of digressed. Let, let me move on. Let me move on. For us, that is the body of Christ. Our Sabbath is Christ. All the days of our living. You understand what I'm saying? Every day is our Sabbath. Hmm? This means that we are able to rest from our labor. Why? Because Christ Jesus fulfilled the labor. Hmm? He did the work out of love for the Father. Now, the key word that I said here is that he what? Fulfilled it. Hmm? Look, 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 look. He did the work out of love for the Father, which translated onto us. That is love. When he took our punishment and became separate from God, because God has to gut the cancer. You guys understand me? God is all about separation. Read your word. Two will be in the field. One will be taken. Y'all y'all, see that? Huh? Yeah. You see it? Look, 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 look. He became sin. Well, I'm talking about Jesus. He became sin for we were sin to the father. That's the reason why it pleased him to do this to him. Hmm? We were nothing but sin to him. Yeah. Hmm? Ugly. Without an appearance or an image. And or a likeness. He didn't even know who we were. Until he came down here and took on our punishment in order to give us back our identities. That's powerful. You guys understand? Yeah. Then out of the same love, the father resurrected him. See, the father has love for the son because of what the son is obedient and willing to do. Amen. Eat of that tree of death. And Jesus said, okay. With all knowledge, knowing that it would kill you. Him. but he trusted that his daddy will raise him y'all understand what i'm saying out of the same love the father resurrected him in newness and therefore this newness translated onto us mm -hmm. so when he got up so did we y'all y'all see that mm -hmm. so we should be living resurrected lives Huh? Huh? That's powerful. Huh? Huh? Yeah. And not this natural crack. Mm -hmm. You know, I need a man. I need a woman. Oh, help me. My man did me wrong. My woman did me wrong. I can't find a job. Oh, help me get a job. I, all this natural crap. When all you have to do is rest in Jesus, rest in Christ. That's right. For there's some reason why things are happening to me and my wife for purpose. 
even though we see it as being negative. God wants us to get something out of it. So we rest in him and say that God, you'll take care of it. You guys understand that? Stay with me here because that's important. Look, 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 look. We should be living resurrected lives, meaning that we should now be weapons of God instead of weapons of death. Hmm? Because some of us in the body are weapons of death. You understand what I'm saying? We look at porn, we fornicate, we have adultery, we do whatever pleases our flesh, we lie, we steal, we put our mouths on people. I'm talking about people in the body of Christ. I'm not talking about people in the world. We are competitive, we jockey to get close to a position, or we think we're better than others because they're not in the same spiritual, so-called spiritual position that we are in. There's nothing spiritual about your position. It's all natural. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, 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 look. Our job in our Sabbath is to uphold the work. Say uphold. uphold. Say it again. Uphold. Say it like you mean it. Uphold the work of the Lord. And that is why we rest in him. Hmm? This is how we stay diligent. That is constant, consistent, or persistent in our effort to accomplish the goal of love. Hmm? Y'all with me? We remain focused. We got to be focused, which is not easy. Which is not easy. You know, it's not easy to love God's creation. Do you guys understand that? It's not easy to love people. Huh? It's not easy. If you don't have the Holy Spirit direct, you won't be capable of it. I'm going through some things now and I say, Lord, I have to catch myself because I said, Lord, I want this. Oh, no, no, I can't. Lord, no, 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 no. This person must need this. Because if they don't, Lord, you'll handle it. Because I know a fool and his money will soon part. Yes, it will. So I got to trust that. Pray for them. So I got to pray for them and I got to love them. But it ain't easy because flesh wants to kick in. I'm telling y'all, flesh wants to kick in. And I have imagined 50 ways to Sunday how people can die. Seriously. And if you say that you are a pastor or an apostle or whatever you label yourself as, and you say, oh my, I don't think about that. You're lying. Let somebody put their mouths on you or do something to your children or do something to you and you've tried to do nothing but love them. You're lying. Yes. And see, we've got to realize that. An alcoholic knows that he's an alcoholic because he admits that he's an alcoholic. So shall we. We are disjointed. And if we allow this, this, this the uh, nature of flesh to creep in, if we allow the nature of flesh to creep in, then we can become weapons of death. I want you guys to understand that. We have to stay diligent, consistent, constant, and persistent to accomplish the goal of love. I'm going to tell you something else. It ain't easy to love those you live with. Mm. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh yeah. I'm talking about your relatives. Oh yeah. I'm talking about sometimes your hubby and your wife. <laughs> and I'm talking about people that are in the body of Christ will take a battle axe to their own wives or to their own husbands just to prove their point, which their point is nothing but fleshy anyway. And these are people that have so-called high offices in the ministry. You guys understand what I'm saying? Understand that they're no different than anybody else that's sitting in the last pew. And we've got to realize that that's how we catch ourselves. That's how we stay diligent, constant, consistent, and persistent. And we stay focused for love. Hmm? And that is why he left us with the helper 
of the Holy Spirit so we can enter into our eternal rest. Because if we did not have the Holy Spirit, we would not be able to enter in. Now notice that Christ speaks to us about a fall. Y'all see that? We read that, right? Meaning that just as quickly as we fell in the Garden of Eden, we can also fall in the body of Christ. He said that, not me. That's in his word. Be careful so you don't fall. And that then I have you guys repeat fall? Yeah. Not only that, as Adam and Eve were new creatures in the garden, so are we the same in the body. We are new creatures in Christ. You guys understand that? We don't get old. We always remain new. Just like Adam and Eve don't get old. They would have always remained new. This is spiritual, right? Huh? In fact, the failure is the same, and that is, disobedience oh yeah it's the same trick that the enemy used in the garden he's using right now in the body of christ you know what and you want to know why they don't know this because they don't come to sunday school <laughs> huh that's that's the plan. they don't come to bible study <laughs> and then they go to services that peddle flesh and not give truth Understand that the failure, and see, my God, this, thank you, Lord. Remember that God prophesied to Adam and Eve. You guys remember that? In other words, he forewarned them of what will happen if they allow doubt and disbelief to creep in, which leads to disobedience. You guys know that God was the first prophet that he prophesied to man? Huh? huh? Well, what do you call? Do not eat in the tree in the midst of the garden. Mm -hmm. What do you call that? Because the day you surely eat of it, you will surely what? Die. That's prophecy. Yeah. Huh? That's forewarning and foretelling. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys understand? If that is true for them, then it is also true and is the case for us now. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Oh, yeah. Huh? Please do not allow deception to enter into your souls or into our souls informing us that our status of salvation is secure just because we confessed with our mouth Jesus is Lord hmm? Hmm? see that's a trick of the enemy that's deception and see people are listening to the saying well, 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 well what is he talking about because Romans is clear yes Romans is clear to those who what receive him in their heart Notice that the enemy used our mouths to destroy us in the garden. And he is using our mouths to eliminate us in the body. Hmm, Y'all see that? My God, my God, my God, this is good. Don't fall asleep on me. Y'all, this is good stuff. Look, look, look. Romans 4 and 12 says this, quote, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. <laughs> oh, Jesus, what a mouthful. For those of us who have read this scripture and we repeat it over and over and over again to folk, you know, just to repeat stuff, yeah. you know. This is rich and stands on its own as the message Christ is communicating to us. Those who believe have a personal relationship with him. He's conveying it to those who believe that they have a personal relationship with him. Look, look, look. The word is living. Y'all catch that? Yeah. The word is living. Living is being active or thriving in this existence. Living is not eternal. Living is natural. Huh? 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 So, <laughs> see, 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 we got to understand that. Living is different from life. Yeah. And we talked about that in our chats, right? Yeah. Right. Living is being active mm -hmm. or thriving in this existence. Mm -hmm. The meaning of this statement is that the word of God is active and thriving in a natural state but without a flesh nature. Oh, 
<laughs> Y'all see that? Yeah, Without like that. a flesh nature, huh? Like Never die, but is coming to an end in this dispensation. Hmm? How could you never die, but you can come to an end? <laughs> huh? That should be something that puts stuff on folk mind right then and there. Let me open up this word and see what this man is talking about. <laughs> huh? This guy, let, let me, let me, let me. Okay, do that. But when you open up your words, make sure you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you and not you. Yeah. Hmm? So that means that you have to become in tune with who the Spirit of God is and what he is in order for him to tell you anything. Because if you don't, you won't listen. Look, look, look. Because you think that you're cuckoo. I'm cuckoo. I'm cuckoo. You're cuckoo. And see, and you believe people telling you that you're cuckoo. You cuckoo. You go. You know, I don't care what anybody says to me about the word that I'm giving out here, because I know that I'm correct and I know that it is righteous, and it is the will of God and it follows the word of God verbatim. So they can say that I'm cuckoo all they want. Oh, don't listen to man. He's cuckoo. Yeah. Well, you keep listening to people who are not talking about the spirit of God, and you'll find yourself being cuckoo straight to the second death. Look, 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 look. The word is living. You guys understand? He is living and has life in the state of living. Can I repeat that? The word of God is living and he has life in the state of living. What makes the word of God powerful is that he is life. That means eternal. Life and the state of living. So that means that he is eternal, even in a natural setting. Mm. Hmm? Meaning he is both natural and eternal, which is spirit. Yeah. Hmm? For the word spoken is both spirit and they are life. Remember Christ told us that? For the words that I speak are both what? Spirit. And they are what? John 6, 63. Even living for the word will come for an end. Oh, yeah. hmm? Y'all see that? Hmm? When we cease to live, now I'm talking about us. When we cease to live and gain life, living comes to an end. You're not living in eternity. You have life and that which is more abundant. It is so different. You know, I haven't tasted it yet, but I can only imagine. I can only imagine. What's the song? I can only, and God gives us this because he gives us insight. I can only imagine. How, see, for one, I won't have to worry about a mortgage. <laughs> Y'all understand? Amen. Yes, amen. That's right. I won't have to worry about food. See, that's a concern. I don't know if that's not a concern of y'all. That's a concern of mine. Well, you got to understand. <laughs> I got to have some food in the house. Y'all understand me? <laughs> I got to have my rent paid for and my wheels covered. Mm -hmm. And I won't get upset because I have to have my wheels covered. <laughs> because, and I won't be upset because there won't be a such thing as money. I would have more than enough. Can you imagine how the, and that's just one small minute aspect of it. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about bodily secretions and all this other type of yeah. nonsense that goes, I know it's too, that goes, but I have to make it real, that goes on with these corpses mm -hmm. that we carry and how foolishly hungry they get for whatever. Mm -hmm. You guys understand me? That will make a good man become bad. And when I say man, I'm like Pastor Lee. I'm talking about men and women. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all feeling me on this? Okay. What makes the word of God powerful is that he is life. And life in a living, in a state of living. So even that will come to an end. Perfect example of this is Christ living in us. And that is why the word lives. Hmm? Let me say it again. Christ living in us. 
is the reason why the word lives. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Because you don't see Jesus walking around here hmm. <laughs> anointing and back. You don't see that, right? Because he's in us. That's the reason why he can be everywhere at the same time, all the time. Right, right, right. Look, 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 look. Meaning, mean, meaning this, meaning this, meaning this. Christ living in us. And that is why the word lives. We are his vessels on the earth and in this world. You guys with this? But know that our living will come to an end. Hmm? And so will the living word. I said living word. Y'all with me on this? The word will be nothing but life, meaning that, and this is after judgment, meaning that it will be all power and all powerful. And, and it is and will be eternal only. Hmm? See, I don't know about y'all. I'm living to live again. Amen. See, I'm living to have life. I don't want to live again. I'm living to have life. Y'all yeah. with me on this? I don't want to live to live again. I'm living to have life. Eternity with God. And that is the reason why we will enter into his rest and rest in power. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever hear that? Mm -hmm. Rest in power, my friend. Rest in power. Because if they're in Christ Jesus, then they're resting in power. Miss Max Patton, she's resting in power. Mm -hmm. Jesus Jesus. So the word that is in us and that we have surrendered our lives to is active and is life through us. That's the reason why you're able to lead people to Christ. You're leading them to life. Mm -hmm. which And that's love. Mm -hmm. Which Christ then conveys to us the power that we have. And this is knowledge well beyond our finite minds which are our 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 limited souls. You guys with me on this? Which are our limited souls for right now. Please, those of you who have ears, please let us hear. Now check this, because this is important. I want y'all to pay attention to this. This, 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 this is very important. And this is scripture stuff. And this is knowledgeable stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to bore people, but I need for you to get a hold of this because this is important. Check this. Since we are his spoken word and are active in him, full of life, then we are sharper than any two-edged sword. I said, what? Sharper. Amen. Sharper. Sharper. You know what I should have named this is who am I in Christ? His weapon. Mm -hmm. Because his weapon is sharper than any two-edged sword. Look, 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 look. But I didn't think people would get that. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit put in me two edged sword. But he did say, you know, son, we should have named this that because they will get it after I finish downloading this in you. Look, 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 look. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. He used the division of what? Soul and spirit. Y'all see that? And then he goes a step further in comparison. He goes, and of the joints and marrow. Y'all see that? You see that? What does that have to do with the spirit of the soul? Well, I, I'm glad you asked me because that's what I asked him. And this is what he told me. See, to convey the significance of this power, he compares the soul and the spirit to joints and marls of the body. Because you'll understand that. Look, look, look. In other words, he compares the strength. He compares the strength of his power to bones. Or I should say the strength of his weapons power to bones. Now, why is that? Because bones are supposed to be the strongest part of the human body. Ooh, did I say something? Check it out. Not, not the muscle, but the bone. But the bone. For even the heavy muscle must rest on the what? Bone. Y'all got that? Y'all see that? See? God ain't playing on it for us. He is very particular, particular in what he states to us in his word. But the question still remains, why does he compare this to the bone? However, first, let me take you through this. Let me say this. First, to pierce is to penetrate, not to slice. 
Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. This is what he told me. To pierce is to penetrate and not slice. It is easy to slice something, but it is brute strength to penetrate something of this magnitude. Something sliced, in our case, can or will be singed back together. See, he's not, he, he, he doesn't want anything to go back to the same way that it was. So if you don't understand that, if you don't believe me, have anybody ever had surgery in here? I've had. I had my appendix out. I got a scar that's right here. See, they sliced me open, took the appendix out, then they stitched me back together so that the flesh would singe back together as in normal. So I don't have any pain. I don't have anything. My flesh is not separated because it hasn't been penetrated. It's cinched back together as though nothing has happened. God is not looking for that. You guys understand? That's the difference <laughs> in piercing and slicing. Hmm? Hmm? Something sliced in our case will be cinched back together, but something penetrated perhaps can't be. Why do you think people die from penetrations? Da, 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 da. Couldn't save them. <laughs> you guys understand? Da, 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 da. I couldn't save them. <laughs> because they were penetrated. You guys, they, they call that in prison, they call it, uh, what they call it, shanked. They call it shanking. huh? Yeah. And that's the same thing that if you're in your kitchen and your girlfriend or your boyfriend come behind you go, da, 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 da. <laughs> you may not be saved. You guys, I'm saying, I'm just trying to make a point. I'm trying to get y'all to get this picture, right? <laughs> it is so to pierce. Check this out. It is to make a hole, or to run through it, or make a path in it. Y'all see that? See, when you shanking somebody or you piercing them. You know, when you're slicing somebody, you're not piercing them. Yeah. You're not, you know, you, you guys understand? That's the reason why in surgery, they slice you so that you can singe. They don't. Yeah. You guys understand? <laughs> they don't do that. That's not surgery. You guys see, you see what I'm saying? So look, look, look. But in our case, we've got to make a hole. We've got to penetrate. Hmm? It is to make a hole or to run through it or make it up or make a path in it. It is separation. Hmm? Hmm? Therefore, the soul and the spirit are equated to joints and marrow, which is equated to bone. Therefore, bones are symbolic of the spirit or to be exact, the spirit of Christ. Oh, let me explain that to you. Jesus is the only man that did not come here with a broken spirit. Y'all understand that, right? Jesus is the only creature that did not come here with a broken spirit. We all have come here with a broken spirit. That's the reason why we're born again. Jesus, Jesus. that's to what mend our spirits back together. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't be. But it couldn't be sandwiched back together. It had to be mended back together, which means that it had to be penetrated so that something else can run through it. Look! 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 Christ is the only man that did not come here with a broken spirit. When one is born out of iniquity, he is born broken or with a broken spirit. Don't think that anybody came here perfect. I don't care if they had billions of dollars. They're still broken. They're still evil. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now, look, that spirit becomes mended and strengthened by what is downloaded in it. If the world is downloaded, then the spirit and the soul is strengthened by what it learns and what it sees. Y'all understand that? See, you got to understand that for years, the world has been what? Penetrating. The world has been singeing you and molding you, right? Before you, you know, and people say, well, oh, no, not me. I was born saved. No, you wasn't. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I got saved at 14. Okay. You got saved. Look, look, look. Look, but the world, and that's any creature, any man, is downloading and which is strengthening the spirit and the soul of what it is being downloaded with. In other words, for us, it is conditioned 
to the world. You have a condition and a culture of the world. You have a world culture. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Talk to some of these kids out here in the street. You know, you ain't got to teach a kid how to be bad. They automatically know that. You have to teach them how to be good. Huh? But Jesus came for it to be unconditioned. And the only way that that could happen is if we were to be penetrated or separated for a path that leads to him. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, quote, Jesus said to him, I am the way. The what? The, way. the what? The way. I don't know about y'all, but that sounds like a path. Y'all see, y'all see that? I am the way. And that path or that way is truth, which leads to what? Life and the life. No one comes to the who? The wow. father, except through who? John 14 and six. Y'all getting this? Mm -hmm. It is being born again with a resurrected mind. Hmm? The reason, look, 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 check this out. The reason why no bones were to be broken with Jesus is because his spirit was never broken. They could not break his spirit. No matter what they did to him, that's the reason why the father refused to have his bones broken because the father knew that his spirit would always be what? With him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Y'all understand that? We're talking about the broken bones. Now, you know, you ever wonder why? They never, and why God would not allow them to break his bones? Because they're symbolic of his spirit. And Christ did not come in with his broken spirit. No. Look, 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 look. Psalms 34 and 20 says this. He guards all his bones. None of them are broken. John 19 and 36 says, for these things were done so that the scriptures could be what? Fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Hmm? Exodus 12, 46, in one house, it shall be eaten. You shall not carry any of the flesh outside of the house. Understand that flesh, flesh is not supposed to be projected outside of the house of God. Flesh is not supposed to be projected outside of the body of Christ. It has not changed. Huh? 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 nor shall you break one of its bones. You, he's talking about the slain lamb. Remember, this is Passover stuff. Y'all get it? Y'all get it? Look, look, look. Numbers 9 and 12 says, they shall leave none of it until morning. Talking about the lamb, talking about the lamb that's symbolic of who? Christ. Nor break one of its bones according to the ordinances of the what? Passover. They shall keep it. Please understand that this that this with the symbolism of the sacrificial lamb is about the Passover. And our chats are ultimately about the Passover. Get ready and get them ready for he is soon to return quicker than you think. See, it's about Passover. Exodus speaks of the first Passover, right? Hmm? Y'all stay with me. Numbers the second. See, Two Passovers that the Bible speaks of. Yeah. Huh? But in the New Testament, the Bible speaks of the third Passover. Oh. Oh. See, Christ is our Passover. Symbolic of the first in Exodus. Huh? Symbolic of the first Passover in Exodus is for the Father. Hmm. Stay with me here. The second in Numbers is symbolic of the slain son, which is the son of God. And the third, the lion of the tribe of Judah that's coming back here, the Holy Spirit. Understand that there is an angel of death and there is an angel of life. Y'all feeling me? There's an angel of death and there is an angel of life. The angel of death is that of the Old Testament. And the angel of life is that of the New Testament. See, you got to rightfully divide the word of truth. You got to understand that's part of rightfully dividing the word. The angel of death takes the, let me say this, the angel of death takes, 
He takes, he takes, he takes. While the angel of life gives, he gives, he gives, he gives. Therefore, the third Passover will be a takeover. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. As evident in the rapture. Y'all see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a song that says, do not pass me by. Da -da 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 -da. And God will not pass you by unless you tell him to. Huh. See, not everybody will be caught up in the rapture. I'm talking about in the body. And maybe perhaps that's what they mean by that song. I'm so rotten, I'm so bad, please don't pass me by. Huh. You guys with me on this? Mm -hmm. Because God don't pass anybody by unless they tell him to. He's the perfect gentleman. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do as being truly having Christ as my Lord, then guess what? You may not get caught up, but you still have another opportunity, right? Isn't that what the word says? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Because see, the rapture is not his coming back. The rapture is his takeover of us. Oh, yeah. huh? Huh? But look, look, I digressed. I digressed. John 19, 33 says, quote, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already what? Yeah. Dead. Yeah. They did not break his legs. He's the only one that they didn't break. They didn't have to. Therefore, if we are in Christ Jesus and Christ dwells on the inside of us, then we are that powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword that pierces the spirits of men. All of us are spiritual then surgeons. You guys feeling me on this? Now, being such, we have the power to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart of men. Let me say that again. Being so, and I'm about done. We have the power to discern the thoughts and the intent of the heart of man. And as a believer, we must know that the thoughts and the intent of the heart of man has not changed. Outside the body or inside the body. It has not changed. Why? Because man is in the body. You guys understand? Daddy, God informed us of our intent of the heart. Precepts upon precepts. Quote, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every what? Intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. Genesis 6 and 5. That hasn't changed. <laughs> look, 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 look. The futility, the futility of man, that has not changed and hasn't changed even with Christ manifesting himself in the flesh. We still in the body have horrible intents. Mm. <laughs> Meaning, even Christ having changed the heart of man. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That is the reason why our hearts must be stayed on him through his spirit. And understand that I am my brother's keeper. You, you feel me on this? So if my brother's a KKK, I said my brother, not my brother. Who's supposed to be my brother? You know, they're supposed to be in the body of Christ, right? Yeah. Hate, hate. If he goes astray, so do I. And that's the reason why we're to deliver this message. Repent. For the kingdom of God will soon be at hand. Look, 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 look. Hebrews 4.13 says, and I'm done. Quote, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to his eyes, to the eyes of him to whom we must give what? An account. That means you got to tell your story, baby. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, yeah. Huh? Huh? And see... I kind of have a feel, and they probably won't go like this when I get up there. I'm going to tell them about the ugly first, the bad first. I'm so sorry, God. I actually have been some. Because he, he already knows. Because I don't want to get in there and try to say, you know, I, I preached the gospel for you. You know, I, I, I was a teacher. I, 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 I took everything you said to, to me, and I gave it to them. No, I want him to know that I realize that I'm as filthy as a filthy rag. 
And the only way that I get clean is through you in this process. And I love you that much that I'm willing to give you all the ugly, even though the ugly that you have, what, forgiven and forgotten. And I'm waiting for him to say, son, I don't remember any of that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That's when you know you made it in. Hmm? See, you can give him the good stuff first. But when you give him the bad stuff and he says, son, I don't remember any of that. I just got that from the Holy Spirit. That's when you know you made it in. Look, 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 look. This tells us that even we must give an account to God for the weapon is without repentance. Let me say it again, Pastor Carolyn. The weapon is without repentance, but we're not. Hmm? We're not. See, the weapon is the word. <laughs> Jesus. And there's nothing bad in the word. There's nothing that the word has to repent itself for. No. But we do. For everything is in the heart of man is exposed to God and should also be exposed to us if we are truly in him. Huh? Mm -hmm. See, we already know. See, when I, whenever I go out and speak to anybody in the body or outside the body, I know that the intent of the heart is to be evil continuously. Mm -hmm. I already know that. When you speak to me, when I speak to you, when you speak to me, you should say, you should know his intent is to be evil continuously. Huh? So therefore, I've got to let him know, listen, you better repent because there's something that you said, there's something that you've done, there's something that you've seen. You need to repent because God is coming when you least expect him to be here. Look, 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 look. Understand that without him, we have no covering and are subject to be taken by the second death instead of being taken over by life. Hmm? Therefore, let us renew our minds, that is our souls, on a daily basis and be transformed that we may prove, that we may do what? Prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Let him use us as his weapon to change the culture of this world. Who am I in Christ? His two-edged sword. God be the glory. To God be the glory. For those of you who desire to be the weapon of God, then become part of the good news. And that is God is born, Christ is born, Christ has died, Christ has risen. And Christ will return again. Then make this declaration with me by repeating this prayer after me. I want you to say, God, I know that I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. And that you raised him to life. I trust him as my savior and I will follow him as Lord from this day forward. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. For those of you who are in the body of Christ and may have backslidden, repeat this prayer of repentance after me that was taken out of Hosea. I want you to say, take away all, God, God. take away all iniquity. Receive me graciously, for I will offer sacrifices of my lips. The enemy shall not save me. I will not ride on horses. And let me just say this. So that because some may be confused as to what that means. This is a prayer taken out of Hosea. I want you to understand that when Christ returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we're going to be right with him riding on horses. Mm -hmm. See, you don't ride on a horse with an enemy, no. with the enemy. You only ride on a horse with a good shepherd. Mm -hmm. See, Christ provides transportation. Uh, thank you, Lord. The enemy does. He wants you to foot it. 
Mm. So repeat that again for me. The enemy shall not save me. The enemy shall not save me. I will not ride on horses. I will not ride on horses. Nor will I say any more to the works of my hands. You are our gods. It's not about you. It's all about him. Don't get it twisted and think that you're doing all of this. For in you, the fatherless finds mercy. Grant me mercy, Father, that I may return to you in repentance. Now, if you just made those two prayers, know that the angels of God are rejoicing. Jesus has his arms stretched out wide to receive you. And I have another brother and sister that have entered into the kingdom of God, the body of Christ, or I have another brother and sister that has returned. To God be the glory for what he is doing in this place. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you giving you glory and honor, magnifying you, glorifying you, lifting you up and thanking you, Father God, for another wonderful spirit side chat, Father God. Thank you for revelation, Father God, and clarity in the name of Jesus. We just bless your name and we praise you, Father God, and we thank you for truth, Father God, going forth in your name. We bless you. And we bless your Holy Spirit and we, we bless the helper and the keeper of our souls. We bless the transformer, Father God, that will transform us back into the image and likeness of your dear son, Jesus. And we just count it all joy to be part of this number, part of the number that will be used as your weapon to pierce the hearts of man, to even perhaps plant a seed, Father God, and to let them know that you are soon to return. Oh, my Lord, we pray all this in the mighty name of your dear son, Jesus, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we say amen, 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 amen. and amen again. To God be the glory. I believe that I just taught myself happy. To God be the glory. I'm trying to see if, in fact, didn't I hit record on this? You got it? Because I can't see where it says to stop recording. I got you. This uh, is hidden. So, is there anybody that did not understand what this chat was about today? Any questions anybody had on what was stated today when this spirit?